on the Retro Show today. Some guy called Very Practic. I am your father. Computer broken. How do I look? You look a bit like a gnome. Welcome. I said episode four, not four. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Oh, hello, Chip Dippers. Yes, welcome to Retro Recipes and another episode of The Retro Show. The Retro Show. Very good. And uh, it's so great to see you here again. We can actually see you, so I um, don't know if you might want to change or not. In the last episode, we ended with a poem. You remember that? I do by Michael S. Harvey. Today, for a reason you'll find out, I think we should start with another poem from Michael S. Harvey. Here it is. Will a puppy practic and parry practic to Will he practic with all technology now? Computer games, love all this nostalgia and one more of the same. We love a banging chip tune when we fight off the hordes. We love the diagnostics on printed circuit boards. We love to see a recap of things back in the day. We love to see him succeed his own PCB way. We love retro recipes and retro recipe poles. We love retro Brian and old computer codes. We love to look at those things which make us feel all warm. Remember when you past yours in retro techno form. Thank you, Michael S. Harvey. Uh, and Eminem. So you, have you seen this in the news? No. Okay. I have no idea. So it's a website oh, no. called uberduck.ai and it uses artificial intelligence. And I thought it might be funny to choose from one of the many people uh, Eminem to read out that. Uh, e -oo, e -oo was a bit of a moment too. I think that might have been my favorite part. It's not as good as when you do it. E -oo, e -oo. <laughs> it's like he's in the room. Um, so that's big thanks to MS Harvey and <laughs> Eminem. Let's carry on with some retro memes in I See What You Meme. Mm -hmm. Gaming in the 90s was crazy. What? <laughs> so what I love here is they've isolated each kid's face. <laughs> this guy on the top right, he's never seen anything like it yeah. before. What's, I don't know what's happening. Someone's that. stepping on his foot. <laughs> yeah. But he's happy. Ooh, is but, he? Ooh, I could crush a grape. British viewers will <laughs> recognize that from nope. kids' TV. Nope. <laughs> this kid's just completely. From a distance, it looked like there were bottles of booze on the table and that this was like a rager, which is the only reason a child would be passed out on the sofa. Well, childhood was very different in the 80s. I would give it 10 out of 10 for craziness. Started setting the bar pretty high. Yeah. All right, sure, 10 out of 10. So, remember when we were the gaming systems to have? Sega says. Yep. <laughs> Atari 2600 says. I have no memory. I have no memory, poor thing. Got one back there, I hope it's not too offended. Um, very funny, six out of 10. I, okay, I, I would give it an eight. I like um, sad memes. <laughs> Realistic oh. Mario. Here he goes. Nothing wrong with this. <laughs> watch him, watch him. You had to wait for it. Oh, this is just for pure coolness and nostalgia. Uh, I found this footage of the Star Wars Palatoy factory. Wow. So this is when Kenner were making the, uh, the Star Wars toys. I had one of those AT-ATs or at -AT Um And I actually wrote to them because we it said in the instructions you could remove the legs from the Atta. Mm -hmm. We couldn't remove it. So I wrote to them, Dear, dear Star Wars, <laughs> how do I remove my legs? And they actually wrote back with a typed letter saying you can be really rough with, with it. You have to exert a lot of force and leverage. Uh, but it worked. So it was very cool actually seeing where they were, where they were made. Did you have any Star Wars toys? Yes. 
Um, most of mine were actually from The Phantom Menace, and uh, you may have heard of it. Uh, it was the communicator that had the audio chips and the little action figure. Yeah. Um, I was a big Jar Jar Binks fan. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I think any fans of Frank Spencer automatically oh. like Jar Jar. She's a big Michael Crawford, Frank Spencer fan. But I only learned about it recently. So going back and comparing him to Jar Jar, they're very similar. Yeah. And Jar Jar is based on Goofy. So any of those Disney people that hate on Jar Jar but love Goofy, you're... In your face. In your face. You had a funny story two days ago with friends and... To do with Michael Crawford, didn't you? Yes, I have a I have a friend, Josie, um, and uh, she will be watching this. And Jake, um, she loves Michael Crawford and all of his Disney affiliated music, and she has the CDs and all the things. And I brought up Frank Spencer, and of course, Americans have never heard of Frank Spencer, and said mothers do have him. Imagine the shock seeing your <laughs> idol who played the Phantom of the Opera so beautifully and on the stage. So, <laughs> oh, Betty. Yeah. So. Captain of Whoopsie in the Barry. In my Barry. Yeah. <laughs> I think everyone in England can automatically do a Frank Spencer impersonation. Okay. Anyway. That was very funny. Would you like to read? Write out the name Donkey Kong, but replace the D in Donkey with the first consonant of your first name and replace the K in Kong with the first consonant of your last name. This is your official DK crew name. Oh no. Lonky so, Fong. Lonky Fong. Lady Fractic. Yeah. And you would be Ponky Fong. Well, at least we're both Fong. <laughs> but we are you know, married. Very funny. Six out of ten might recommend. Uh, probably time for one more. Oh no, I don't. I haven't even read it. Oh, this is painful. It is painful, but it is exactly the same size. Uh, I think I had that same radio. That looks like a, uh, a forward of some kind in England. I used to love my uh, tape deck in my car because I would use the um, auxiliary tape mm. adapter. And this is before they had the um, FM adapters which i also did too They're often a bit fuzzy and it's, crackly oh. and then if a car pulled up next to you and happened to have one the music and you could play eminem to them i i love eminem we love puppy practic and perry practic to him. anyway well that's it for i see what you mean i see what you mean <laughs> All right, we have a quick little unboxing. And two things for you and zero for me. So first up, of course, something from... YouTube. Now you might be thinking, what the is going on? It's got dog hairs on it. <laughs> Make a wish. Is that what you do on dog hairs? I've been. Now, I was going to say we got the plaque in the last uh, retro show. Retro show. Retro show. And Lady Fractive noticed the card in the pack from YouTube, kindly said, you can order new plaques for your team. So in there is one for Puppy Fractic the second, and you can open it. May I have the cutter thing? Cutty thing. You ready? You ready? Are you afraid of the box? Don't be scared. Da, da, okay, da, da. Wow. Yay! It's... Puppy Fractic the oh. third needs to be oh, involved hello. now. You want to pull this off? Thank you. Go ahead. Get it. Good. Good girl. Good. Oh, there we go. Let's see. And you got the same letter from Suze. Suze. We won't go through all that again because we did that. Oh, have you seen it? Have you read I, it? it? There's a... I'm going to pull it. Yay, prison. <laughs> that was just tissue. Uh, presented wish. to Lady Fract Express Ro Re <laughs> Rest Restaurant <laughs> Restaurant recipes. recipes. Presented to Lady Fract Retro Recipes. We don't say that very often, to be fair. Yeah, Perry Fractic, Lady Fract Retro Recipes. See if I start with you, it's much easier. For passing 100,000 subscribers. Yay! It's me. Congratulations, darling. Thank you. From all of us at YouTube. <laughs> And if, I know, you didn't get one, but you, do you want to look at mine? She could get one, but they, with shipping and everything, it was about $150 each. So, tax deductible. All right, <laughs> moving on. Put this gently over there. Well. The next up for Lady Fractic again. Look something from... 
Plan dude. <laughs> what did you say? Plan dude. Plan dude. All right. But I don't know what this is, but I'm very excited. Little letter. Dear Perifractic, I am Aaron Inga Ing Britson. Oh, he's phonetically. That's very Yeah, funny. thank you. I've, no, I've never been sure. Uh, so he's one of our patrons and sent you this donation. Calling myself Plarn Dude because I primarily make Plarn sleeping mats for homeless outside of or out of plastic shopping bags. And I've been making beanies lately. I only learned how to make beanies in February, but I've gone over and over the beanies I've made for you and can't find any obvious mistake to fix. <laughs> My goal was to create retro style beanies that are at least somewhat reminiscent of a Commodore 64. That's the first thing that I thought of when I saw this, by yeah. the way. So well done. It's a pun. Bean there, done hat, volume one and two. <laughs> smaller form, the smaller form factor. So this one's mine and this one's yours. Cool. Here's the expansion port. So before we put these lovely warm hats on, I should point out to the viewers Today is the hottest year we've had so far. It is 115 Fahrenheit outside our, in our garden. Let's put on our beanies. Yeah. I actually wear a lot of beanies. How do I look? You look a bit like a gnome. I know, my dude. I, I do. I literally, I'm literally wear a beanie. Sweat, oh. <laughs> I was like, I wear a beanie every single day. Um, I get a lot of um, hat hair. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. I love this. Thank you so much. And um, keep up the amazing work for the homeless community. And yes, it is now time for old news. Old news. That's old news. And first up. Then Commodore hard drive controller. So this is Amiga OS 3.2 brand new operating system for the Amiga 500. Um, this is Amiga Bill with his VHS cam. I, I put a link to his video, I put footage from his video because so many channels are covering this. Um, there's really not a lot of point in me going into it, but it is newsworthy because the last version of Amiga OS, OS was 3.1, which was released in 1996. <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that sounds right. So as you can see, there's all these new features in this. I'm really um, lucky. And I recently got a terrible fire 1260 card for my Amiga 1200. He is lucky. Uh, I'm, I'm really jealous because the problem with it is it comes on only a CD-ROM or you can download it as, as floppy disk ADF files, but there's like 30 or 40, wow. maybe 50 disks worth. I don't have a CD drive because I use a real Amiga. I don't use an emulator very often, so it's quite hard to upgrade it. Next up... Say hello to the new iMac. Hello. So, as we predicted um, a couple of episodes ago... We did. These retro-themed Apple iMacs came out, and you can see all the different colors uh, next to this lady. Ooh, I like that one. I like the yellow. Is it yellow? That is yellow. But look. Wow. I like so, that... If, for reference, I like the teal at the top. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> So the, those aren't the original order of the colors, but no. it's the first time Apple have gone back to their retro logo. Uh, I was so pleased when I saw that. Uh, I think a lot of companies now, not not just Atari, and a lot of people are realizing the power of, of retro. So good for you, Apple. Let's see that logo on the back of some machines soon as well, not just flashed up in an advert. And then real quick, these popped up on Instagram. They are by, I think they're by, um, Failed, but failed, but he's credited at the bottom there. But he, he envisaged some retro style uh, modern company logos. These are really good. Yeah, I particularly liked the, the Google. Obviously, Kodak was an old company yeah, was anyway. Yeah, like, that looks familiar. But that was a lot of fun as well. I think that's enough old news for now, isn't that's it? That's enough. Old news. Been there, done that. Been there, done hat. That's what I meant. Welcome to this week's Quick Bites. Uh, and a very 
interesting story. So, this Amiga 500, about a year ago, to... Hmm, <laughs> chicken. <laughs> we just gave her a treat. About a year ago, developed a weird fault where the caps lock would start flashing random error codes. Now, different number of flashes means something different. Three mm -hmm. flashes, four flashes. But it would do it would do the whole range. So it obviously was not detecting what the error was. So you think that a simple, a simple, simple solution, right? Is replace the keyboard, because the keyboard um, usually the fault is related to thank you for your support to this chip here, which is the basically the microcontroller chip for the keyboard. Mm -hmm. That um, sends all the data to the motherboard. Where does it send the data? It's data. That like his mama. Mm -hmm. Anyway. That's a motherboard and it sends the data. I kid. She's too clever for me, guys. I, someone take her off me. I, I'm just, I'm not worthy. Someone get rid of him. Don't take me. Take him. <laughs> we just got each other, huh? You and me, baby. <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Um, obviously. So I replaced the keyboard mm -hmm. with this new one. It didn't help, did it? Same fault. Uh, Cat lock would flash randomly. Um, I ended up using this for a uh, heat test with, um, what did I do this, cooked it or something. Anyway, so you, of course, sometimes you can get two faulty keyboards. So of course I replaced it with a, a third one. I also replaced the whole microcontroller circuit. Same fault, caps lock flashing. Got to be an issue with the motherboard, right? Not the fatherboard. Right. So on this Amiga, I won't take the whole thing apart. Oh, I will. <laughs> I didn't know if it was unscrewed. So I replaced the, firstly, the CIA chips. These are the two complex interface adapters. What about the FBI chip? There's, it doesn't have one, but it has an odd CIA and an even CIA. Mm. I, used to say, I used to think it said Evan, that was like his name, because he got fat Agnes. And these control the keyboard, so it must have been a faulty CIA, right? So I swapped these, swapped them again, swapped them again, replaced them completely, replaced them again. Still got the caps lock fault. So then I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. I've replaced the keyboard, the CIAs. So I replaced the entire motherboard. This is a brand new motherboard in here. Wow. The fault still happened. <laughs> how, long, how long can we do that? Then it occurred to me. And then I thought. So then I thought, we've got to do the echo. So then I thought, thought, thought it's got to, it's got to be the power supply. And actually, I reached, I reached out on Facebook, and people said, probably power supply is supplying too much power. He didn't ask me. I should have, huh? Mm -hmm. So, oh god, <laughs> that would have, that would have been the fifth uh, keyboard. Um, so I bought a Ray Carlson power supply. He sounds actually, nice. It's actually right there, installed, mm -hmm. brand new, manufactured, perfect voltages. Still happened. So at this point, <laughs> I've replaced the everything. It's a new computer. Except the case. So the only conclusion that this leads me to is my Amiga 500 is haunted. Ooh. What a time to yawn. There is actually- Did she yawn when that noise came out of my mouth? No, when I said, is haunted in the most serious, it'll be okay. But there is one other thing that occurred to me. All these keyboards, the fault's happening with the keyboard. Maybe the keyboard's haunted. Ooh. Did you know there is a fix for that? Yes. Let's watch it now. So I sent my keyboards off to Ivan Retrovich of oh. Russia Computer Commodore Computer Repair Russia for, uh, well, let's just watch. Good, uh, hello, and uh, welcome to another episode of Computer uh, Repair Service Russia. Uh, today we have something very special. Uh, we have keyboards from the US of S, and we need to, uh, well, demonize it, because uh, some guy called Very Practic, he uh, tried it, not working. So I called the priest to uh, make it fix. Make it fix. Well, I'm on my way to Petro Tichenkovich, my favorite uh, priest in my favorite gulag. Yes, this is the reliefs. <laughs> 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 
Anthony, wake up! Wake up, you lazy! Now we play, okay. How yeah. much? Uh, 20 rubles? Yeah, come Let's on. Get that, uh... Oh, it's a space bar crucifix. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Wow, someone found their grandpa's yeah, yeah, old yeah, luggage. Yeah. Well, uh, that was that. Uh, as you can see, the keyboard has been demonized and uh, also got very bright. Not sure if that side effect or... Well, anyways, it works. Uh, I got uh, only five rubles left. Uh, not sure what to do. Maybe go visit uh, Maria Boingbalskava, but uh, we'll see. Goodbye. Goodbye. So uh, I've got the keyboards back now, as you saw, and would you believe our little exorcism didn't help, and the keyboard still intermittently displays any of those uh, various error codes. Surely those were a red herring. But if you know what might be missing and what could really be going on here, please drop us a comment below the video. I'll update you if the ghost ever leaves and I figure out what's going on. Did you say Spasiva? Spasiva. Spasiva Ivan Retrovich and his friend... What was her name? <laughs> the other... Amiga Boing Ball. Boing Ball. I, I think that's the friend he's gonna go visit. Um, the Boing Ball is a famous animation from the Amiga. God. Either way, Spasiva. It is time for some homebrews. The world population now reaches 8 billion people. First up, we have Resilience. Riot. So this is a virtual reality game inspired by The Sentinel. The Sentinel was such a popular game on the Commodore 64, Spectrum, Amiga, you name it. Uh, me and my friend Ali Fractic played the heck out of it. And this is a modern reimagining using virtual reality. The idea is you have to work your way up to the highest level where the sentinel stands mm -hmm. and take over his his square, his space. Yeah. But just look how cool this is. It's very well done. Radioactive clouds have been detected all over the Now if you know the original, this is the, the same kind of layout. A group of hackers have developed a robot Still looks great. 20, 30 years on. Starbook has lost control of its uh, And this was made by Emmanuel Eichart, Resilient. There is Emmanuel himself, holding his RR badge. Turns out I sent it to him bef before we even got to film the episode. Uh, I'm not being too efficient, I okay. think. And of course, everybody who submits something to the Homebrews section or Nostalgia Flakes gets an RR badge. And you can check out perifractic.com slash submit to submit your content. And also perifractic.com slash badge to see information about the badge and also the retro computing museums that it offers you free entry to. Check it out and thank you to everyone who is submitting stuff like this, which is Ghostbusters 2021. Now you know the game that I've showed so many times on the uh, channel. Yes. So a slightly enhanced version of the music. Um, this is by Dave Eison. And he wants to share a game that he's been working on since November last year. He says, as I know, you're a big fan of Ghostbusters. I hope you'll like it and share it on your homebrew section. Homebrews. Homebrews. Old news. Uh, <laughs> this is my first game and I've written it using assembly. All the background graphics that you can see are done using standard Petski. Reminds me of the rooms in Spy vs. Spy. Yeah, I was thinking exactly the same thing. I'm sure it was inspired by that. Um, Dave can tell us in the comments, but... Uh, the music is by Roland Hermans, and he got in touch with him and asked if he could use the music in the game, which he was happy for him to do. Very good. Uh, and he thinks the music is just an enhanced version of the original Ghostbusters music from, yeah, I really like from the Activision it. game. You can tell us a few extra little drum beats. I, yeah, I, I really like it. 
extra little drum fill there. That's Slimer, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Game's about 90% complete. There's still a few bits left to do, and he's not sure if he'll continue. As people have pointed out, he may run into some legal issues over some of the copyright. Yeah, call it Ghost Dusters and make sure that they're vacuums. And um, that's it. Like I said, she's too clever for me. There you go. Problem Although solved. Although it is, you know, if you've ever played Luigi's Mansion, he's literally vacuuming up ghosts and they never had a problem with Ghostbusters. Love it. Ghost Dusters. Ghost Dusters! <laughs> He looked, that also, uh, maybe we change that animation because that looks like he really needs to pee. But either way, I love it. Well done, Dave. You loved last time we had Blade Runner. We did. Speaking of Petsky, done all in Petsky. Can you recognize this scene? I was going to say, it looks like Luke. It's a Star's Wars. So this is again by Hack on Sauride, who did the Blade Runner and all the others. Empire Strikes Back, digitized in purely Petsky uh, and ASCII characters. And of course, that iconic scene. Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. Spoilers. He told me enough. No, I am your father. No. No. That's not true. That's impossible. No! No! Still don't think it's true. So cool. It's just another moment where we get to point out that the line is not... Luke, I am your father. And the line actually is... No, Luke. No, I am your father. And now people will say that's the Mandela effect. Oh, for sure. I don't think Nelson Mandela had anything to do with, it, with Star Wars. It was James L. Jones. Correct. Okay. Uh, but either way, terrific work, Hack on Saw Ride. Uh, and it's a, you know what's fascinating is how it looks almost HD, even though we know it's, what is it, 200 characters horizontally. And I think it's because it's moving so fast that your brain if it sees, for example, a percentage mark change into an S, your brain just kind of melds mm -hmm. the two scenes between, the two pixels between, and it just sees a, a high def version. I just think it's a fascinating way to maybe we'll watch the whole movie in an episode. Coming soon, a feature length episode of The Retro Show. The Retro Show. And that's it for Home Brews. Home Brews. Old news. And yes, as you saw, it is now time for a delicious and nostalgic bowl of nostalgia flakes. Um, first up, we have Reset Magazine. This is by Hayden Duval. Wow. And he says, here's a photo of the cover of the first edition of a C64 and Atari ST fanzine. Interesting combination. That me and my friend Mark published in 1987. We didn't sell enough to cover the photography and the photocopying needs uh, and costs. So it was the first and last edition. Sad. But 15 year old art skills were in full effect, and you can see his Zap 64 and Crash on the table. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> accidentally zooming into a crotch. Um, and this, of course, reminiscent of Splash and Crack, which me, me and my friends Ali Fractic and Matty Fractic sold for charity outside Kew Gardens. Good work, Hayden. Maybe like a Zap 64, which is now available at zapmagazine.co.uk. Maybe reset. Will uh, will be reset. Yeah. <laughs> Say something funny. Say something funny. Exterminate. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, I hear the I hear the Tardis. I love that high pitched sound at the end. It sounds like it's screaming. Wait, how where, how are you? Thurman. Thermos. It. it Oh, that's how they mean. Yeah, Puppy Fractic's playing the Thurman. <laughs> that's how she went. Yeah. So next up, we have Joel Reed from Reed's Redactions. Um, 
who I chat with a lot in the YouTube comments. He says he found this picture of himself playing on their Tandy 1000 when he was around five years old. He's either playing King's Quest Ninja, Castle Adventure, or Digger, as these were the most popular games in his house at the time. He looks so happy. I love the little hands on the keyboard. We only needed to press like two buttons at a time. Yeah, very cute. And before a couple of final nostalgia flakes, in a recent recipe, I told you about our sponsor, Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider who are huge retro fans, as you can tell from their logos. Linode makes it easy to give your creations their own personal space on the internet. And a great example of that is gaming servers. And there are plenty of one-click apps to deploy things like uh, Minecraft or a CSGO server. You could even install something like a MUD server multi-user dungeon on Linode for some retro gaming fun. If you run into any trouble setting up, Linode comes with amazing 24-7 customer support too. Sign up today using my link in the description and we'll give you a $100 60-day credit on your new Linode account. Uh, and this, in a similar vein, is John O'Brien with his Apple IIe around 1988. Of course, we have ours there around 2021. And this is Joshua McDonald's, not this isn't Joshua, this is Hope, uh, Joshua's youngest daughter. She grabbed the C64 Mini all by herself and just started to type, he says. Uh, they regularly watch YouTube together and she and her oldest brother seem to love old computers. This is a perfect one because she can't break the keyboard. Unless she gets Dean Woodyatt's uh, Mini keys. And then she'd have to install it herself. But I feel like if she pushed hard enough, she could probably get some something to snap and move. Daddy, I fixed it. And then you say, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's lovely of you. Now I just need to order a new PCB from PCB Way, who of course make great quality PCBs starting at just five dollars, three pounds fifty. Because <laughs> as we all know, PCB stands for <laughs> printed. No, 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 no. Poor computer broken. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I thought this should fit into Nostalgia Flakes instead of um, the memes. But this, this is... is an oxymoron. This is perfection. Micro computers in education. Nothing micro. Well, I suppose back then, because that's the thing, they were micro. <laughs> As my ears fall out. <laughs> they were micro because the ones before would fill a whole room, you know. I don't know. I wasn't there. Well, the Cray supercomputer, for example, would have filled a big part of this room. Would a then... student use one of those? No, they, that was probably like a million dollar oh. thing. And then you've got IBM's, um, what's it called? Think Blue, 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 uh, Blue Danube. What was it called? The one that beat Gary Kasparov at chess. It was the first oh. to beat a human yes. chess, a grandmaster. I'll put the name right here. So that was, even that was pretty big. And then you had all the tape reels as well for the storage instead of a hard disk. So micros were, back then that would have been like, wow, it's so small. But now it's like, wow, it's so big. That's what you said. <laughs> uh, and we'll finish up with... So I just got the new Motorola Razr 5G. And I used to have one of the Motorola Razrs when I was younger. It was my favorite phone because the thing was indestructible. This is the second version. However, I found a really cool feature on this one now where you can do this. Wow. Yeah. This is pretty nostalgic. Oh my gosh. For anyone's had a Razr, you'll know what this is. You even dial out with this. The only thing you can't do is when you hit messaging, it takes you to the actual smartphone. I'll, I'll survive. Fine. But that's a pretty freaking cool feature if you ask me. Pretty freaking cool. He said freaking, I'm sure. He did. Nothing else. So as he said, very nostalgic. And that is Nostalgia Flakes. And that is our show. Thanks again for watching. We will be back very soon with another episode of The Retro Show. The Retro Show. Remember guys, if you like what you saw, subscribe below and cheerio! cheerio. <laughs> it's not true! That's impossible! <laughs> Hat care. Boosh. Amigos. Amigos.
Ich wollte es 